Here with uh, his take on all of this is John McNeil. He's the CEO of DVX Ventures. He's a former uh, executive at Tesla and Lyft. He now sits on the boards of GM and Lululemon. Not going to ask you about Lululemon. Maybe, I don't know, it'll come up. One, they make a great suit. They do. <laughs> you do. You look real. I, li hey, I love you. those pants. I have a number of those pairs of pants. So. They're the best, right? They're right? the best. Yeah. All right, we talked about Lulu. Okay. Now let's talk about Tesla and GM. Let's start with the charging uh, partnership, so to speak. What, have you what do you make of it? How significant is it both for Tesla and for the board, for the company whose board you sit on, GM? Yeah, I think it's good for everybody in the sense that the first question I get from friends when they're considering an electric vehicle is, hey, what about the charging? I hear it's unreliable. I pull up to a charger, or I may pull up to a charger, it doesn't work. And I think GM looked at that and said, hey, to get adoption of EVs, we need to have reliable charging. And the most reliable charging on the market is Tesla standard. Elon, on the other hand, was saying, hey, I'm willing to open source my standard to make it a, uh, to, to help with the adoption of EVs. So it's, a, it's better ergonomically, it's better reliably. Uh, when you pull up to the, what I'll now call the European standard chargers, those may work three out of four times. One out of four times are not working, which isn't acceptable. You pull up to a Tesla charger, it works 99% of the time. Some people wonder, well, what's the benefit for Tesla? Obviously, you get the traffic, you establish it as the standard perhaps in North America, but you're, you're allowing your competitors to sell a lot more EVs and, you know, uh, and say to their customers, hey, you don't have to worry anymore. Yeah, Elon it really does have this purity of vision. I remember when the Nissan Leaf came out, and a number of us on the management team have a competitive response to that. And he said, no, guys, this is great. There are more EVs on the market. We ought to celebrate with every Leaf we see on the road. And that, there's a purity of this motivation within him. But clearly on the commercial side, Tesla's going to be able to access tax credits uh, by opening up this standard. Uh, and so they're going to get help funding the network further. And this, uh, this, as Dan and I said last week, might be their AWS moment. They're going to have an ability to now to make money off of this infrastructure that they've created that's been a cost to date, and now it's going to be a revenue source. And a recurring revenue source. A recurring source, revenue which, source, of course, potentially. People right. like to, investors like to put a very nice multiple on. Where do you think we stand in terms of the wave of EV adoption right now? It's interesting. We're seeing oil prices actually kind of tank again. They're at levels we were at four to five years ago. Now, some of that is probably because... Uh, you know, on the margins, EV, you know, kind of saps demand from gasoline. But it also maybe changes the equation in some uh, in some customers' minds in terms of the cost advantages of going electric. Yeah, we're talking about chargers. And in the U.S., there are about 40,000 fast chargers. In China, there are 4 million. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a sense of the growth that we're about ready to, uh, to see in this super cycle of, uh, of electrification of automobiles. And it, it, at my firm at DVX, we're investing actually in uh, multiple companies in this ecosystem because the ecosystem is going to build beyond charging. Uh, if you want your EV fixed, you can actually use one of our companies, Kirby, and you can have somebody come to your driveway and fix your car. We're going to see a lot of these kinds of businesses sprout in the ecosystem because we're really just at the beginning. We hit this tipping point in December where 5% of EVs sold, or cars sold or EVs. Mm -hmm. Then it went to 7% uh, in the first quarter. And the numbers show in Europe and China, when you hit 5%, within four years, almost half the cars sold are EVs. So really? You we think are, we're on that path? We're, yeah, you just see how the math works, and we're going to be on this very steep curve for sure.